What's going on guys, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today, I finally got my hands on a Raspberry Pi 3B Plus. The guys over at the Pi Shop in Delaware actually overnighted me one and I'm really thankful for that. I'm gonna leave a link to their shop in the description. Definitely go check them out, awesome customer service. In this video, I just wanna go over the new specs, the new added features, and I also wanna benchmark this thing against the Raspberry Pi 3. I was able to overclock this to 1600 megahertz. It was really stable for about an hour and then it started giving me crashes. So I backed it down a little bit and I'm at 1575. But in this video, I'm gonna be benchmarking at stock against the stock Raspberry Pi 3. And I'm also gonna overclock this as high as I can go, which is 1575. And I'm gonna overclock the Raspberry Pi 3 that I have to 1375. That's as high as I can go. I'm gonna run benchmarks between the both of them. I'm gonna run a CPU benchmark and a GPU benchmark stock and overclocked on the old Raspberry Pi 3 and the new Raspberry Pi 3 B+. We're gonna see what kind of performance gains we can get out of this Raspberry Pi B+. If you made it this far into the video, you're in luck because I'm gonna be giving away two of these tomorrow. I will make a dedicated video on how to enter to get one of these. It's gonna be a worldwide giveaway, so be sure to subscribe to the channel. Turn notifications on so you can get that next video with the two Raspberry Pi B Pluses that I'm gonna be giving away. All right, for the changes on the Raspberry Pi B Plus, we have a newer CPU. It's actually pretty much the same CPU that was in the Raspberry Pi 3. They have a new power management system and a heat spreader. They've also upped the clock by 200 megahertz, so we're at 1.4 gigahertz on the new Raspberry Pi B Plus out of the box. So I've heard a lot of arguments about this being a brand new CPU, and yes, it does have a different model number, but the performance is pretty much the same if you can get your Raspberry Pi 3 clocked up to 1.4 gigahertz. They've also added dual band AC Wi-Fi, so you can get that 5 gigahertz out of the Wi-Fi, and a pseudo gigabit ethernet. It's not real gigabit, it does 300 megabits a second. It's actually gigabit over USB 2.0, so you can't get those full gigabit speeds, but you'll never utilize them anyway on a Raspberry Pi. Theoretically, this ethernet is three times faster than the Raspberry Pi 3. There are a few other new features like power over ethernet, but that's gonna come later on down the road, maybe in a month or two, they'll have something out so we can power this thing over ethernet. Here's a quick comparison between the Raspberry Pi B Plus on the left and the Raspberry Pi 3 on the right. As you can see, they have changed the layout just a little bit. The CPU is in pretty much the same spot, but it does have a heat spreader on it, so it's a lot taller. A lot of the custom heat sinks that cover the ethernet chip and the CPU will not work. And as for the flirt case, it does fit the Raspberry Pi B Plus, but the CPU doesn't quite line up with the heat sink inside of the flirt case makes contact with the CPU and cools it with the whole case. It's a little off, but it does work. I would wait until Flirt comes out with a case specifically designed for the Raspberry Pi 3B+. There are a few other differences, but I'm not gonna go over them in this video. I'm excited to get these benchmarks running. I will be using this makeshift heatsink that I came up with. This is actually an Asus Tinkerboard heatsink with a little fan on top of it. I'm gonna be using this on the new Raspberry Pi 3 B Plus and the Raspberry Pi 3. So in both of my benchmarks, they'll have the exact same cooler. All right guys, so I'm finished running the benchmark test. All of these are labeled. I ran four tests here. I used the same exact SD card, the same power supply, the same keyboard, and the same heatsink for both of these pies in every one of these tests. The pies were basically in the same spot. Stock Pi 3, we ran Sysbench on all of these. Maximum prime number checked in CPU test up to 20,000. Lower is better. Stock Pi 3, 93.1049 seconds. Okay, so that's not bad for a little ARM CPU. Stock Pi 3 Plus, 79.6564. They do claim about 15% increase in speed over the Raspberry Pi 3, but that's due to the 200 megahertz bump on the CPU. We're at 1.4 for the stock Pi Plus and 1.2 for the stock Pi 3. Moving down to the overclock test, my Raspberry Pi 3 will only hit 1375 stable. If I go any higher than that, it's gonna crash eventually. So I kept the stable overclock that I can use also overclocked the GPU on both of these, but it's not gonna affect this test. It will affect the next GPU test though. Pi 3 with an overclock of 1375, we scored an 80.9603. That's 
that's awfully close to the stock Pi 3 Plus, and we're also really close to that clock speed of the Pi Plus. So if you can get your Pi 3 to 1.4 gigahertz, it's pretty much gonna perform the same as the stock Pi 3 Plus. Moving on to the last overclock test, the Pi 3 Plus, 1575 megahertz stable. I've been running it all day like this. We scored a 70.8279. So that overclock does help it out a lot, but if you're not willing to overclock your Raspberry Pis, the stock Pi 3 Plus is gonna be faster. If you're willing to overclock even your original Pi 3, you can hit those speeds that the stock Pi 3 Plus comes out of the box with. Not much of a big gain for CPU performance, but it is pretty decent with that 1575 megahertz overclock. It is the fastest Raspberry Pi ever produced. The next test I ran was an OpenGL 2.1 GPU test. I am using the beta OpenGL drivers, stock Raspberry Pi, about 360 FPS, stock Pi Plus, about 380 to 390, Pi 3, 1375 megahertz overclock on the CPU, 500 megahertz on the GPU, 450, 460. Over to the Pi 3 Plus, 1575 megahertz CPU, 500 megahertz GPU. We're pretty much on par with the Raspberry Pi 3 because the GPU is clocked exactly the same. So not much of a jump in GPU performance. You gotta remember, it's using the same exact video core as the Raspberry Pi 2 was using. So there hasn't been a GPU upgrade on a Raspberry Pi in a long time. So the burning question in everybody's mouth right now is, is it worth the upgrade? For $35, I really do think it is. I've been able to overclock this higher than I could any of my Raspberry Pi 3s. Plus we have sort of gigabit ethernet at least three times faster than the regular Pi 3. The next question I got from everybody is, will it run N64 any better? It will run N64 a tiny bit better than the Raspberry Pi 3, especially with the overclock, but you will not get full speed N64 emulation out of RetroPie. You also won't get a super significant gain in PSP or Dreamcast emulation using RetroPie, Recallbox, or Laka on the Raspberry Pi 3B+. It's pretty much a Raspberry Pi 3 with a 200 megahertz boost out of the box, AC Wi-Fi, and sort of gigabit ethernet. But if you love Raspberry Pis like I do, you definitely might wanna just go ahead and bite the bullet. It's 35 bucks. A lot of the older Raspberry Pi accessories are gonna work, except for a few cases and heat sinks that went over the CPU and the older ethernet controller. The CPU is slightly higher due to the new heat spreader on it, and the ethernet slash USB controller is in a different spot. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. I will be coming out with a ton of videos on this. I have RetroPie running on it. I wanna show you some performance gains in N64. It's not significant, but you will feel a little bit of a difference in some games. I also wanna do a video and show you how to overclock this. Hopefully some of you guys can get yours up to 1.6 gigahertz or even higher. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe. You also want to turn notifications on because I am giving away two of these Raspberry Pi 3 B pluses in the next day or two. I'll make a dedicated video and announce how to enter. I really appreciate you guys watching. If you could hit that like button and subscribe. And like always, thanks for watching.